With the Indigo Disc DLC and Mochi Madness released, Scarlet and Violet is complete. The Pokedex is as full as it's gonna get, and something is off. The Generation 6 Legendaries, the Dark and Flying type Evil Tall, Fairy type Xerneas, and Ground and Dragon type Zygarde are all missing from the game. Every other restricted legendary from all generations, Mewtwo, Ho-Oh, Lugia, Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza, Dialga, Palkia, Garatina, Reshiram, Kyrim, Zekrom, Lunala, Solgaleo, Necrozma, Zacian, Zamazenta, Eternatus, and Calyrex are all accounted for. Well, there's a lot of these guys now, huh? So why is it only these three didn't get to come out and play this time around? The obvious answer should be Dexit, right? After all, powerful staples like Smeargle were absent in Sword and Shield. Well, in Sword and Shield, all the legendaries were legal after the Crown Tundra DLC, so removing access to legendary Pokemon is unprecedented, and only leaving out one generation of the iconic restricted or box legendaries is really suspicious. Does Game Freak just hate Gen 6? Is this confirmation that we're skipping the Gen 5 remakes and we're going to get Pokemon Z right away? Well, no, probably not, but I think it may be something even more ridiculous to fathom. I think, maybe, Game Freak may have done this because they worry about Pokemon balance. I propose that, for some reason or another, Game Freak believed that these Pokemon would be too good to include in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but why? That's what we're gonna look at today. So historically, has there been a problem with these guys? Well, in past generations, Xerneas was genuinely, absolutely, ridiculously broken. Geomancy, its signature move, raises its special attack, special defense, and speed by two stages each, but it's supposed to take two turns to do so, kind of like Solar Beam. But just like Solar Beam, there's a workaround. With the item Power Herb, players can skip the setup usually necessary to charge the move, meaning all you need to do to make Xerneas have absolutely ridiculous stats is to make sure it survives one measly turn. And with partner Pokemon in the field like Fake Out Incineroar or Follow Me Fake Out Quick Guard Smeargle, that was extremely easily done. Once you pulled that off, Xerneas could sweep through entire teams with relative ease all by itself. And this guy was everywhere in Generation 6 and 7. Never winning worlds, but always winning an insane amount of regionals, international, and national events. Players from that time period often say the only reason that Xerneas didn't ever win worlds was because everyone that had even the slightest shot of doing well at worlds built their entire game plan around beating Xerneas, even the Xerneas teams were anti-Xerneas Xerneas teams. Anyway, this seems like a likely candidate at first, but in Sword and Shield, Xerneas had extremely mediocre performances at live competitive events, so it's not like it's broken regardless of the context. And while yes, Evil Tall and Hulesterix and Zygarde have been at least solid Pokemon in every format they've been legal in, they don't have any format-breaking history the way Xerneas does, so it feels like they probably would have just nerfed Xerneas the way they did with Zacian if that was the problem. But no, that's not what they did. In fact, I think the issue is a little more fundamental to these Pokemon. Let's break it down. But first, subscribe. Xerneas and Evil Tall have parallel abilities, Dark Aura and Fairy Aura, which respectively increase the power of all Fairy and Dark-type moves by 33% while Evil Tall or Xerneas are on the field. This ability was a huge part of what made both Pokemon so powerful. It allowed Xerneas to do genuinely absurd damage, even to targets that resist fairy type once Geomancy was up. And Evotol used it to not only boost its powerful Dark Pulse, but also to allow it to deal good damage while using support options, with the move Snarl, usually a move that does very little damage but lowers the opponent's special attack. When Evotol used it, it did devastating damage. Evotol would also more often use its aura ability to support partner Pokémon like Incineroar's Knockoff or Urshifu Single Strike's Devastating Wicked Blow. We're starting to creep up on the issue here, and we need to illustrate the issue with an example from, and please don't click off, Yu-Gi-Oh! In 2003, Yu-Gi-Oh! printed the card Smoke Grenade of the Thief, and it was a garbage, garbage, stinky, trash little card. And it stayed that way until 2020, when the card Invernoble Knight Emperor Charles came out, and wow, that card has a lot of words on it. TLDR, these two cards comboed to allow you to rip your opponent's hand apart. Very, very strong, and not exactly fun. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! banned Smoke Grenade of the Thief. The thing that happened to Smoke Grenade of the Thief is starting to happen to VGC. Smoke Grenade is, in a vacuum, an objectively bad card, but there are so, 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 so many Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and to keep them different from each other, Konami has started to make their pieces interact with the game in more and more unique ways, leading to unintended consequences and unintended interactions, like Smoke Grenade plus King Charles accidentally breaking the game for a little bit. Now in Yu-Gi-Oh, they can just ban the card after the 
expect the next ban list a few months down the line. But forbidding Pokemon that would be otherwise legal purely because they're too strong in context isn't really Game Freak's thing. It seems they'd rather just not include the Pokemon in the game altogether. And to do that, they need to practice very diligent foresight or they may ruin competitive Pokemon for a whole game's life cycle. Luckily here, it looks like they did their due diligence. As you all know, Generation 9's signature gimmick is Terrastalization. Once per battle, you can change one of your Pokemon's types into their Terra type, which gives them all of that type's attributes, including the same type attack bonus, or stab, on that type of move. Plus, if you Terrastalize into a type you already were, you get an additional bonus damage on attacks on top of your normal stab bonus. Being able to stack Fairy Aura or Dark Aura with Terra Amplification would simply not be okay. A lot of Pokemon have been using that extra boost on top of attacks to make themselves into extremely potent sweepers, and funnily enough, a lot of them have been Dark and Fairy types. From the start of Scarlet and Violet, Terra Dark Black Glasses King Gambit has been a successful Pokemon. Stacking damage multipliers on top of each other to deal devastating damage with Sucker Punch and Kowtow Cleave. Similarly, in Regulation A, Terra Fairy Sylveon was quite strong, and of course, once it was legal, Terra Fairy Fluttermane became a powerhouse that never went away. Pairing either of these two Pokemon with their respective auras would be busted in half. Not to mention that if for some reason you didn't want this extra little bit of synergy, you could just, oh, I don't know, one-shot Golden Gill with plus two Terra Fairy Moonblast from Xerneas? Not a big deal. As the amount of Pokemon, moves, abilities, items, and extra mechanics available to competitive Pokemon players continues to grow, Game Freak needs to be extra cautious to make sure that no accidental synergy is too broken and sneaks through the cracks or they could accidentally ruin their game for an entire generation. Prevent exactly this is why I believe Xerneas and Evil Tall weren't in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But you might be asking, Scraw, what about Zygarde? Uh... Honestly, Game Freak probably just thought it would be weird if only one of these three were around, so he had to catch a stray. But let me know what you think of this theory in the comments. Thanks. Bye.